Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some roommates recommendations with the brothers best friend tropes. Sorry to hear the fan going, it is a bajillion kajillion degrees in Texas and I'm not turning it off so <laughs> I'm gonna have to deal with the fan sound if you can hear it. I love the majority of these books listed here. Half of them are contemporary romances and the other half are historical so let's get started. First I'm gonna start with the contemporaries with A uh, Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. This is the third book in the Beautiful Bastard series. You do not have to read these books in order however you have met the two main characters of this book and the first couple books in the series. Our heroine in here, Hannah, she is a science nerd. She works at a lab every day and that's basically all she does is go to work and work in this lab every day, come home, eat, sleep, and restart the day. Like she loves her job, but it's kind of become all that she's doing. And her brother and her dad kind of have an intervention with her and it's like, hey, um, we feel like you needed to be doing more. You need to go make some friends. You need to go do this. And so her brother is like, hey, remember Will, my friend from college? He's actually in New York right now. I believe it's New York or so Chicago. Oh, one of the two. He's in the city. <laughs> He's in that city. He just moved to that city. How about you meet up with him and y'all can be pals. Y'all can be friends. She's like, uh, okay. She's a little nervous because she had the biggest crush on Will when she was young. So I think she was like around 10 or nine when Will and her brother were in college together and he'd come home for breaks sometimes. And she just had the biggest girl school crush on him, even though he's way older than her. So it's a little bit of an age gap romance, but I feel like the more forbidden aspect in here is because <laughs> He is best friends with her brother. So the two of them kind of hit it off all over again. They get to know each other. Um, he finds her hilarious. And they end up actually also going on runs together every morning to get to know each other and spend time together. And then it slowly grows into love. This book is hilarious. I feel like this is like the most entertaining book out of the Beautiful Bastard series, simply because of the banter between these two. Next I have Fixer Up by Tessa Bailey. This one is about Georgie and Travis. So Georgie in here is the baby of her family and she's always been labeled as that. And she really wants to get out of that label. She wants to be considered a grown up and be taken seriously by her family. And so Travis in here is actually best friends with her brother and he is depressed. He is very sad, very upset. He is a famous baseball player, but then something happens to where he has to not play anymore. And he's come back to their small town and he's kind of wallowing in self-pity. And Georgie comes by his apartment one day. It's like, hey, I'm gonna get you out of here. We're gonna stop this. We're gonna stop this. You gotta get up and stop being sorry for yourself. You gotta change things, you gotta do something else. And then the two of them get in a situation where they fake date and you realize why they need to do that. Um, but it's really cute and really hot. I really love this one. So please, please, please go check it out. An all-time favorite of mine is The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry. This one's actually step brother's best friend, but like, they consider each other siblings, so you know, whatever. So when Maggie, I believe, is about six or seven years old, um, her father ends up remarrying. I believe her mother has passed, and so he ends up remarrying this woman who has two children of her own. So she basically gets a brother and a sister and a mom all in one day. And on her first day of meeting this family, she ends up meeting her brother's best friend, Brooks. And immediately, right when she sees him, she's like, I'm gonna marry you one day. He's like, uh, no gross, you're a girl. I'm not marrying anyone. <laughs> we flash forward a couple years. The heroine is very persistent that they're still gonna get married or whatever. And she goes in the woods to plan said wedding, but then something goes wrong and she witnesses something that she should not have seen that is very traumatic. It has basically forced her to stop speaking. She has not spoken since that day. And ever since that point, Brooks has felt like guilty that he wasn't there that day. Like he should have come to their pretend wedding. Like he should have been there for her. Um, so she didn't have to experience something like this. Immediately after this whole occurrence, Brooks makes it his mission to be friends with Maggie and to protect her. And so then it jumps to later years when they're in their um, late teens, early 20s, and they are best friends too. Um, he's best friends with her brother, but also with her, and they spend as much time together, and um, the two of them end up falling in love. There is a lot more to this story, but this is one of my favorite romances of all time. It's truly epic in my eyes, and I feel like everyone should read it. And I also wanna mention, I feel like the brother's best friend aspect in here wasn't too forbidden. If you're not wanting, if you're wanting to read like one that doesn't have a forbidden aspect to it, like this is one you should pick up because the brother kind of like just assumes the whole time that they're gonna end up together, so. Next is Hearts to Want You by Alicia Rye, the third book in the Forbidden Heart series. This is my favorite one in the series. I adore it. Even here has a huge crush on her big brother's best friend named Gabriel. 
there is an age gap in here. She's kind of like the baby, baby sister of the family. So I believe this like an over 10 year age gap between the two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, she is very interested in this big tattooed man. Um, however, he's finding it very difficult to actually do something about his feelings because he feels the same way about her. But he's finding it very difficult because number one, that is his best friend's baby sister. And two, the age gap. And then three, he is like the son to the housekeeper for their estate. Like Eve is the youngest to a very prestigious family. She's an heiress. And so he's finding it very difficult to believe that he should be with an heiress. But then the two of them have to spend some time together, quality time together, because um, Gabriel's best friend and her brother is getting married. And they have to help the wedding and everything like that. So the two of them can't help each other and can't keep their hands off of each other once they get started. And it is so good. And the last contemporary romance that I want to mention is Come Back to Me by Mila Gray. This one's more of a new adult romance. So please take with that what you will. Um, it's a little bit over the line of YA. But the romance in here I feel like is beautiful. I love it. It's one of the first books that got me into the romance genre. Kit one day is on leave with his best friend from the Marines and he goes home with him um, to visit his family and there he ends up meeting his best friend's little sister Jessa and the two of them just have this instant connection and she has her first kiss with him and then it jumps into a little bit of uh, later time when um, Kit is about to deploy again with his brother and then a tragedy strikes and Jessa doesn't know whether or not her brother and Kit will come back. So um, please be aware of the trigger warnings in here. There is loss of a loved one in here, um, but this book ends in an HEA. So it's always gonna be an HEA. <laughs> the next five books that I wanna talk about are historical romances. First is a novella. This is Lord Dashwood Missed Out by Tessa Dare. Nora in here is a very prolific writer right now in society. Um, well, first when she was younger, she and her brother lived next door to, what's his name? George, George Travers, Lord Dashwood. They lived next door to him and her brother and Travis were like best buds, best friends and she, had been crushing on him hardcore for years but then at one point i feel like she i think she leaves like her heart in a platter for him kind of like admits how she feels and he leaves and never comes back and she is so hurt by this and so then she decides to write a, a like little short stories and put it together as a book to talk about lord ashwood and now he missed out on everything they could have had together. And so it's a fictional story, but not really, because <laughs> she's talking about basically Lord Dashwood, um, Travis, and what they, what he missed out on by leaving her. And so this takes place years later when Nora is quite famous right now, especially when it comes to women in society. They love her work. And she's trying to make it to this book signing. And um, the only coach available is one that she has to share with none other than Travis Lord Dashwood. The two of them kind of have to confront the feelings that they had all those years ago. And Travis has to admit why he left. So the brother aspect in here isn't very apparent, but I just had to recommend this book, okay? It's just, it's, it's so good. I love this novella. Duchess of My Heart by Maya Banks is another one that I really enjoyed. This one's kind of unique compared to the other ones because the brother's best friend in this situation when it is when it comes to the hero. So the hero has a brother and the brother's best friend is a woman and there's nothing going on between the woman and her best friend, but the hero ends up falling for his brother's best friend who's a woman. So Jillian here has experienced quite a lot of abuse. So please be aware of that before going into this book. And she is honestly thrilled that her husband is dead. Like he has died and she is so happy. Like he made her life horrible. And um, he was very abusive and is glad to be rid of him now. Normally in society, when your husband passes, you go into a state of mourning. You wear black, dark colors for about a year and then you're still in mourning for the next couple of years too. Jillian is not having any of that. She's like, I hated my husband. I don't care. I am not going into mourning for the man who beat me. And so um, she immediately goes into society with these bright, colorful dresses on. She's kind of a scandal when it comes to the time. They find her very scandalous. Case is actually someone that she ended up meeting um, during the time that she was abused and um he has become quite a important person to her like that is her lifeline case is her best friend he's helped her through a lot in her life um and so it's kind of been rumored in society that her and case are together when in actuality they're just best friends justin who is a duke 
has heard wind of this and thinks that Case is kind of like throwing his future away by spending time with this woman and he believes having like hooking up with this woman like he believes he's hooking up with her because that's what everyone else thinks um and so immediately right when he meets Jillian he doesn't know who she is and he becomes like so intrigued by her and then her identity gets revealed of like oh yeah I'm Jillian I'm Case's best friend and he's like you're the woman who is kind of like ruining Case right now and she's like what <laughs> anyway uh justin is trying to convince jillian to just leave his brother alone to prevent any scandal when it comes to case because he wants the best for his brother but jillian's like no that's my best friend and i'm not leaving him the banter in here is great i really enjoyed it and the two of them obviously end up falling in love so next is the ice duchess by tracy sumner so georgiana and dexter and anthony georgiana's brother were quite close friends as kids and they did basically everything together but then anthony ends up passing away and the link between georgiana and dexter is kind of like severed when Anthony passes. After that point, uh, Georgiana is put in a forced arranged marriage with a cruel man um, and he just recently passed and she is finally out of the clutches, out of his clutches. So it's years later after her cruel husband has died and Dexter kind of comes back into town um, to take care of his ailing father. Since he's back in town, he decides to go to some parties and he bumps into Georgiana. And he immediately just starts remembering everything that they did as kids and how much fun they had and just like how much he loved her as a child. However, because of what Georgiana's experienced, like she vows that she's never going to marry ever again. She's kind of turned her heart to ice. She's called the ice duchess in society. Dexter is going to prove her wrong. He's going to show her how much he loves her and how she can love him back. So I thought this one was really sweet, a little bit emotional at times because the brother in said situation is no longer there and both of them have experienced the loss of losing him but this was quite enjoyable historical and i really like the hero in here because he was very nerdy and he's a paleontologist he goes and digs up fossils which is really cool next i have his bride for the taking by tessa dare um this is a very short novella that was a part of a like novella bind up that i read called rogues rush in but i really enjoyed this novella it's very sweet the line of the summary literally says the first rule of friendship among gentlemen don't even think about touching your best friend's sister <laughs> so this one's about sebastian and mary so uh that thought has been in sebastian's mind basically his entire life he's very attracted to mary but never wants to sully his best friend's name and i believe like he's passed like his best friend her brother has passed mary has kind of uh been in a situation where she's gonna get married and her to be husband kind of st stands her up and to save her from scandal and embarrassment, um, Sebastian kind of takes the guy's place and marries her instead to make her not feel horrible, um, which is very sweet. He's kind of feeling very guilty because his best friend has passed and he doesn't want to sully his name at all and to kind of like ruin the relationship in his head that he had with his best friend, but he ends up just falling in love with Mary and Mary has been in love with him this whole freaking time. And she's like, freaking finally, finally, dude. <laughs> and last one I wanna mention, it's a very, very, very short novella. It's literally like 20 pages. This is A Midnight Clear by Casey Bateman. So this is a kind of like a Russian historical. So Tatiana in here has been in love with her brother's best friend, Alex, Alex, um, for years, um, but her brother and Alex has been off at war for like two years and she's on her way to go meet with them in London to like meet up with them again because they just got out of war. Uh, but then on her way there, she ends up getting stuck in an inn, they're snowed in and she can't like probably meet their meeting time. And so Alex like travels through the snow in the snowstorm to go find Tatiana and reveal his feelings for her because he feels basically the exact same way. This was really sweet and really cute. I just wish that the author made this into a full length book because it would have been amazing. But I will take what I can get and I really enjoyed this uh, snowed in romance. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romance recommendations with the brother's best friend trope. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a a flower emoji in the comment section down below. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a tree emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.